There are seven continents that shape our world today, but it wasn't always that way. We know that millions of years ago, Earth harbored supercontinents, massive pieces of unbroken land far bigger than any of the land masses on the current world map. These incredible natural structures are already fascinating to think back on, but new research has seemingly uncovered something else in particular that was also supersized in our planet's ancient past, the mountains. This is Unveiled, and today we're answering the extraordinary question, did scientists just discover super mountains? Do you need the big questions answered? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. The mountain ranges on Earth today are towering massive landmarks that reach high into the skies above. But they aren't only impressive because of how tall they are. The Himalayas, for example, are notable not only for containing the tallest mountains on Earth, including Mount Everest at 29,000 feet, but also for spanning an incredible 1,500 miles distance across Asia. The Himalayas aren't the longest mountain range by any means, either. The Rocky Mountains in North America stretch for some 3,000 miles, and the Southern Great Escarpment in Southern Africa continues uninterrupted for just slightly further. These colossal features of the natural world truly do define Earth as we know it. But according to fresh research, even they're overshadowed by hypothesized supermountains that once existed in the distant past. The most recent claims relate to a study published in the Earth and Planetary Science Letters Journal in February 2022. Led by a one Ziyi Zhu, a student of the Australian National University, the findings could revolutionize how we think of Earth's history. The paper proposes that there were two distinct periods in Earth's past, both millions of years ago, when there were supermountains on the surface. These ranges were roughly the same height as our tallest peaks today, but crucially, they were far longer. They snaked across the land for far greater distances than even the lengthiest mountain ranges in the modern world. And the study suggests that their existence may have played an essential role in the evolution of life to this point. But first, how do we know they were there? At the heart of the latest research is a mineral known as zircon. It's special as it can act as a kind of sponge for other elements that may be present in Earth's crust. And because of this, it can function as a sort of time capsule. Researchers behind the study have then analyzed zircons for evidence of elements and natural processes that are indicative of highly pressurized environments, such as those found deep below massive mountains. The findings are still to be confirmed by wider study, but dedicated zircon analysis has so far suggested that some were at one time buried beneath ancient mountains that were at least 5,000 miles long, perhaps longer, or about twice the width of the United States. Taking up considerably more space than today's mountains do then, it's no exaggeration to say that these geological marvels once cut the world in two. In general, a supermountain forms in much the same way that a regular mountain does, just on a much larger scale. Tectonic plates below the Earth's surface collide and push the land above upwards, with supermountains forming when conditions are such that entire supercontinents meet and rise along an enormous length. At their peak, the mountain ranges addressed in the 2022 study may well rank among the largest natural earthbound structures ever. Earlier studies had already theorized the existence of supermountains before, although the literature has now been significantly added to. One of the mountains is known as the Transgondwanan Supermountain, which is thought to have existed between 650 and 500 million years ago. It's named after the Gondwana Supercontinent, which at one time dominated Earth, comprised as it was of modern-day Africa, Australia, Antarctica, and South America. But when it and the supermountain that cut across it eventually broke apart, it helped to form what would ultimately become the smaller continents and landmasses that we know today. The more recent research, however, adds to the story of the Transgondwandan Mountain, revealing that another, similar mountain may have also formed before it. Newly dubbed the Nuna Supermountain, it's thought to have existed between 2 billion and 1.8 billion years ago at a time when Earth itself was around 2.5 billion years old. 
The Nuna Mountain is named for another one-time supercontinent from Earth's past, known as Columbia or sometimes Nuna. Again, as Nuna eroded away over time, it's thought that it became a major contributor to how Earth evolved from that point forward. At the time that both it and the Transgonwantan supermountain broke down, research suggests that there was an explosion of activity on Earth. The declining rock appears to have brought forth a flurry of biodiversity, as those behind the 2022 study propose that there's a striking similarity between the lifespans of both mountains and the occurrence of two of the most important moments in the evolution of life. First, the Nuna Mountains rise and fall between 2 and 1.8 billion years ago matches up to when eukaryotes first formed, a key early organism. Then, the Transgonwandan Mountain, around 650 to 500 million years ago, lines up to when the first large and complex animals began appearing on Earth, a time otherwise known as the Cambrian Explosion, when fossil records start becoming much more populated. Finally, and for further context, it's said that we should look at when supermountains weren't around. There's a length of time sometimes referred to by scientists as the Boring Billion, about 1.8 billion to 800 million years ago, when seemingly not much happened in terms of evolution. And as it turns out, there weren't any supermountains around at this time either. So what's actually happening here? Well, the theory is that the key to these post-mountain periods of rapid change is erosion. When the mountains themselves formed, certain elements from far below the surface of the Earth were suddenly pushed up to the top. And so, as the mountains were eroded away, including into nearby oceans, a wealth of new nutrients became available for life to feast on. It's thought that the natural world changed in all manner of ways as a result. But perhaps one of the most crucial was that there came a burst of oxygen. According to those behind the study, one of the largest ever increases of oxygen on Earth is synchronized with the erosion of the Transgonwandan Mountain. The idea is that the eroding mountain released all new biological material, including masses of carbon, and early life forms converted it into unparalleled levels of oxygen. And of course, that oxygen would go on to become one of our most precious resources. The seeming rate of change is perhaps something of a surprise, but while it might seem like massive mountains such as these would stick around for ages, the opposite is what actually happened. The huge size of the Nuna and Transgondwandan mountains made them far bigger targets for erosion in all the normal expected ways. And ultimately, they were worn down much quicker than other regular mountains are. Earth's raging elements, including harsh winds and heavy rain, broke them apart and spread the rocks, dust, minerals, and nutrients within them all over the supercontinents that they dominated, and therefore essentially all around the planet. These mountains were effectively banks for early biological material, and as they disappeared, they enriched the rest of the world. On an even more fundamental level, the rise and fall of supermountains is thought to all be part of the supercontinent cycle, which is the well-known pattern seen throughout Earth's history, wherein supercontinents form and then splinter off into smaller continents over time. On average, it occurs every 300 to 800 million years, which means that supercontinents should form again in the future, and therefore it's likely that supermountains will form again too. One current prediction as to what could lie ahead is that a landmass known as Amasia will take shape sometime in the next few hundred million years. As many of today's continents are drifting toward one another, it's difficult to predict where precisely another super mountain will emerge, but if or when it does, it'll signify the beginning of another period of massive environmental, geological, and biological change. Naturally, the ramifications of this research aren't only confined to Earth, either. The work unlocks other lines of inquiry regarding how complex life might evolve on other planets, too. We've known for a long time that tectonic activity is important and could be essential, but now we have another model as to how the movement of a planet's tectonic plates and the rise and fall of mountains could serve to fuel how things evolve on the surface, on this world or on any other. Whether here or elsewhere, however, it's a discovery that takes us another step forward in our understanding of the vast and complex natural processes that have brought us all
to this point, right now. And that's how scientists have unearthed giant supermountains, and why that's potentially extremely important. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.